Hello everyone, welcome to this little series I'm doing on folklore of plants and trees of Britain and Ireland. It's about this little guy, the snowdrop. Um, very synonymous with the uh, coming of spring. In fact, they normally uh, appear around um, Imbola, 1st of February, uh, which means in the belly, meaning spring, summer, in the belly, waiting to come out. Uh, also called February bells or Candlemas bells. Candlemas is around Imbola as well, of course. Um, so there's a lot of folklore, um, a lot of folklore around these guys. Uh, in Christianity too, I might as well mention briefly, uh, uh, the angel that cast Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden sort of took pity on them as they bowed their heads and walked through a veil of tears <laughs> and uh, presented them with, a, um, with some snowdrops as a symbol of hope and also to lead them into uh, new lands. Uh, and that same thing happens in this story. So, uh, one day, the Kaleach, the Kaleach is the oldest of the gods of Britain and Ireland. She was older than even she knew. In fact, she sculpted the mountains with her magic hammer, chipping away at them, and she used them as stepping stones. Her sons and daughters were gods and frost giants. In fact, when her sons had an argument, they would lob these great boulders from the mountains at one another and create thunder. And sometimes she flew above Scotland and Ireland in the shape of a great eagle or an owl creating thunderstorms and when she struck the earth with her hammer she would freeze the ground so nothing could move. She was queen of winter, the very embodiment of, um, of goddess as crone. So one day the Kaleach was flying in the sky in the shape of a great owl and she saw this beautiful young girl walking through the forest uh, and she was, she was, she was just wonderful. She was wonderful to behold. And the Kaleach was jealous and she thought she would create mischief for this young girl. Because that's just, that's just how crones are sometimes, aren't they? So she sent wind and rain and storms and blizzards. But this girl, she just kept walking. She pulled her tight around her and kept walking through the forest, almost as unstoppable as the spring because that's exactly who she was. Now the Kaleach, she didn't like this. No, 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 she was jealous. And she knew, but what she did think, she always good at turning a situation to her advantage, the Kaleach, old bearer. So she swooped down thinking, ah, she'll make a good worker for me in my house. So see, she snatched up young bride, because that's what her name was, and flew back to her cave inside Ben Nevis. And she put her to work doing all sorts of chores, scrubbing pots and pans and scraping out the hearth and doing all sorts of menial stuff. But bride, she just did it without complaining. And every day she did it, she got stronger and brighter and the Kaleach, she got weaker and weaker. She knew what was happening. She was wise, she was wise beyond belief, and she had a, a cunning plan. She thought she would give Bride a task she could not complete. This was it. She would wash a, um, a brown, a dun-coloured fleece in the river until it was clean, until it was snow white, knowing that that was a task she could not complete, and therefore winter would last forever. But Bride dutifully went and washed this thing and it wouldn't get any whiter, but all day she was scrubbing it and the next day and the next day and her hands were turning blue. Till at the end of the third day, help arrived in the form of uh, an old man, a sort of a wizened, jolly little man with a red face and a white beard and a twinkle in his eye and a holly coloured tunic uh, and a big <laughs> round belly. I think we know who this is. Anyway, he called himself Old Father Winter and he washed that fleece for her. In fact, he touched it with his, with his uh, holly wand and turned it white. And then he said, I know who you are and I know who your mistress is. Tell Bera, for that is her name, that spring is on her way. Green shoots are appearing all over the land. In fact, take her this snowdrop as a symbol. Well, Bride did as she asked. She went back to uh, the Kaleach's house and put the snowdrops on the 
altar and uh, and gave Kalea the message. And she, the Kalea howled with rage. How dare you? And she was determined to make winter last longer. So she got on the back of a, of a great wolf made of blizzards and rode into the sky and sent storms all across the land. She hit the ground with a hammer, sending ice everywhere. She sent her hags and her frost giants in all the directions, freezing the sea solid, freezing the rivers solid, making the winter come down in a great snowy blanket all across the land. Meanwhile, far across the sea, on the Green Isle, the land of the ever young, Tirunanong, lived the Kaliak's youngest son, whose name was Angus, Angus Og. He was the god of summertime. And he was dreaming, night after night, the same dream. He would dream of his mother's house under Ben Nevis, a place he had not been for a long time. And his mother had a servant who was bright as summer. And he longed, he longed, he longed to be this girl's husband until eventually he decided he would cross the sea just to see for himself if the dream was real or not. Problem was he couldn't cross the sea. It was so stormy because of the, because of the winterous storms that the Kaliak had summoned and, and the ice was covering the land and there was no way of him getting there. But Angus Hogg, he was uh, crafty. He had a trick or two up his sleeve. Neat trick this. He borrowed three days from August and laid them in February. So the seas calmed flat as glass so he could ride across them on his horse and the, the, um, the snow melted from the Hebrides and Ben Nevis and he could just um, ride right up to his mother's house. So he went to his mother's house but the bride she was nowhere to be seen. In fact his mother the Kaleak denied all knowledge of her. Now Angus Og he didn't believe his mother the Kaleak when she said that there was no such girl to be seen. So he left his mother's house and went into the forests and he wandered and wandered and after a while he came across uh, a trail of snowdrops, the only sign of life in that winter locked forest and he followed this trail of snowdrops until he found a girl and everywhere she walked snowdrops blossomed in her footsteps and he um, you know courted this girl and they well <laughs> one thing led to another but they fell in love and went into a secret place where they let each other's sort of spirit pour out to each other and from that place spring poured first snowdrops then primroses then all the other all the other flowers of spring and summer just poured from that place poured across the land now the next day the Kaleh she slept in <laughs> and when she woke she was weaker than ever and she knew she was beaten so that's a story about the coming of spring. And uh, there's another bit on the end of this story because the Kaleh, when she knows she's beaten, she takes the form of an owl and flies to the Green Isle, the land of the Ever Young, a place she's been many times before, where there is a fountain, a fountain of youth. And she sits and just watches that fountain for a long time. She's very good at waiting, the Kaleh. Finally, she drinks and just melts away in the spring dawn dew and in her place is a young girl again she's renewed because the Kaler is just another aspect of the bride and the mother and when she returned to Scotland a young girl with flowing golden hair summer was in full swing for a hundred years and Angus Og and bride were heralded king and queen of summertime so my friends I know it's been stormy days these last few weeks but spring is definitely on its way thank you